many of you would like to have adventurous spiritual life? Yani you live a life that you are so excited about it. You know, I was telling some people, some of us worry so much and we look forward for the weekend that we don't see what is happening from Monday to Friday. Some of us worry so much we are looking forward for the morning that we don't sleep well. Yani, you are so anxious about morning that you can't sleep. But I have purposed myself, I'm going to live high, adventurous, exciting, spiritual life. I'm going to enjoy the life that God has given me. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 11, verse 1 to 10. Cast your bread upon the waters, for after many days you'll find it again. Give portions to seven. Yes, to wait. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. If clouds are full of water, they pour rain upon the earth. Whether a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where it falls, there will it lie. Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. So you are seed in the morning and at the evening. Let not your hands be idle, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, whether both will do equally well. Light is sweet and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. However, many years a man may live. Let him enjoy them all. But let him remember the days of darkness, for there will be many. Everything to come is meaningless. Be happy, young man, while you are young. And let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eye sees. But know that for all these things, God will bring you to judgment. Verse number 10. So then, banish anxiety from your heart and cast off the troubles of your body. For youth and vigor are meaningless. Bless the name of the Lord. Exciting. Living a life that you, 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 you are so adventurous and it is causing you to be so excited and you are not bored at all. There is a highway when you are coming from the U.S., going to Alaska, that you get to a stretch that is over 200 miles. And they tell you, you will be on this highway for 200 miles. Now imagine, you have been told you will be on this pathway for 200 miles. And they are trying to tell you, there will be nowhere for you to stop and buy gas. There will be nowhere for you to stop and have a bite. But you will be on this Stretch for 200 miles. And they tell you, then as you go, you have to choose the route that you're going and choose it well. So that because if you miss it, you'll also miss the direction you're going. And a lot of people live their life, their life like that sign. For 200 miles, you're going to be on this route. And there is nothing that is going to happen until you get to the destiny. And especially the spiritual dimension of their lives. They accept boredom as if something, somehow, that makes them more spiritual. Yani, there are some Christians that boredomness is like spiritual. Yani, you are so bored. I went to an embassy last week with my wife. We were seeking some, some visas. Eh? And then we, we took some photos and we had added value. You know how to add value? You smile. So we had added value into the photos. They refused them. They said, go back, come hard as a stone. So we said, where do we go? No, we have a photographer here in the, in the, in the embassy. So we went. And I could not believe myself becoming hard as a stone. <laughs> and somebody told me, bend. So I had to bend to get that hardness. You see, bored, being bored is not spiritual. Actually, when you're bored, you are losing and you are causing the glory of God to fade away. 
And that's why I'm saying we can live adventurous life. We can decide, I'm going to be happy. This is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice in it. Meaning whatever the day has, I have purpose, I have planned, I have desired, and I'm going to rejoice. Now that passage that I've read, if you go back to the time that it was being written, Solomon has an idea of merchants. Merchants, business people. How many business people we have them here? Business people. God bless you business people. But some of you business people are not risk taker. Your business is that you want it to come to Kenya, then you buy it. You don't want to take any risk. Because you don't believe that they can come from Japan to this place. So what you do, you wait for it to come here. And when it comes here, you have to pay more. Because if I'm a risk taker, I take the risk, then you have to pay my risk. So Solomon looks at the merchants of those days and he realizes he has to use that as an illustration for us to know that for me to live that adventurous life, there is something that I need to do. So he says, cast your bread upon the waters, which simply means for the merchants, they used to sail out. They used to put merchants on the, on the ship to go. And the owner would put a lot. And you know what? It is high risk. Because there were pirates on the sea. Some captains were not good people. They would also sell some and say some got lost and so on. But a merchant believed, even if they brought me half of cargo, I'm well up than someone who is still here in England or in Portugal, or in Spain, who is still there. I'm going to sail to, to, to India. I'm going to sail to Zanzibar to get some clothes. And if I bring them, I'll sell them. And my business is going to be more than the people that have stayed here. But the risk was high. The risk was high. I, I, I don't know about you. But sometimes it's very risky to, to get into the waters. Is there anything that is, is there any place that is not risky? Because even when you are in the sky, it's also very risky. Especially when the thought comes, suppose. Ah, suppose. And then they are telling you, you are that at three feet above the sea level. Kiangalia chini unaona clouds. Yani ile nyumba ulikuwa umeona haiko. Aziva ti ukiyona ndi utakuwa safe. You know, there is no place that you are safe at a gari in end at 200 kilometers per hour. Ikifanya accident, watu wanakufa. But you see, the only thing is, wherever you are, you are taking risk. But it is very scary even when you are in the water. Getting into a boat for the first time, you have to be assured by the captain that they, everything will be well. Like this time we went with the Dr. Kahombe and Ruth and we are in a boat that actually, it is a boat actually. Actually, it is a boat. Amen. It is a boat. Tell your neighbor it's a boat. It is a boat. Yambao. It's a boat. Yambao. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then they take us to the high seas and some of us are not even enjoying it. We are not enjoying anything. Munaona samaki hatuoni bwana. You know why we are not seeing it? We are looking at the show and we are wondering where we are. <laughs> Look for the dolphins. Look for the dolphins. Who is going to look for the dolphins? <laughs> Do you see any fish anywhere? <laughs> but you know, something that is amazing, as we went deeper, then <laughs> the captain spoke to us and said, see, see, there's nothing, you know, see, and he jumped in the water. See? Then he swam a little, he swam a little, he came back. He said, now see, now what you need to do, get a life jacket, and it'll be okay. Was it in a, in a tube? Get into the tube, and it'll be okay. Karen was up number one. Karen, Karen one boy was in the waters. And you know what? Virginia was there too. You know what? Dr. Ruth was, hey man, everybody. What happened? What happened? Someone helped them see. And they promised. In actual fact, there are some of us. Sinikuambia ukweli. Tulienda na kamba. Ah. Yeni ukishika kamba just in case anything happens. 
Mungai, I don't want to say you also went into the waters, but uh, I know you did. But can I tell you something? I didn't. I did not. But you know why? That water was too much. Ilikuwa zaidi ya puru. Iyo ilikuwa maji nyingi sana. Na ilikuwa na chumvi. Na nilikuwa ninaogopa nesikunywe kikombe ya chumvi huko. So the higher the risk, the higher the returns. Bless the name of the Lord. So, 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 so Solomon is telling us that if you're going to enjoy and have adventurous life, one of the things that you're going to do in your life is to release yourself. I don't want to talk much about the risk taking. But by using this illustration, Solomon is encouraging us that we can be risk takers. Not only does the scripture that he's using encourage us to be risk takers, but it is also encouraging us to be high risk takers, to be high in the name of the Lord. But you know, immediately you hear that, you say, no, I cannot risk. I cannot. In actual fact, some of us have a, a tendency of quoting a, a kikuyu word that says, kegoya, keinu kegira, mami wow. Yeah. It simply says the coward goes back to their mother well. So there are some cowards here that, okay, you get back to your mother well, but you come back with nothing. But there are some that go out and they come home with something. So I refuse to be the keg warrior. I want to be a person that can be a high risk taker. In the name of the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. So there are many people that actually have reason. They have been taught. Do not take high risk. But understand that the risk that you take. Helps you to expand yourself. And to expand your horizon. Bless the name of the Lord. So we know. We know. That as you take that risk, then the Lord remembers you and have mercy upon you. So we are looking at the high reward principles. Here are some high reward principles and there are five and then I'll be done. Principle number one. Give expectations over and above. Give. And as you give, give more than the expectation. Give above the expectation. Give over and above. Because expectations sometimes... When you give what is expected of you, it's already like you were saying, you have allowed people to put judgment on you. Don't allow people to put a peg on you. Refuse to be pegged. Refuse to be, you know, people that they can, they can tell you, akifanya hivi, atafanya hivi, akifanya hivi. It's like people know they have programmed you. Ecclesiastic 11.2 says, give a portion to seven and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. That verse, if you understood it well, it simply means don't give what they expect. Give seven. No, give eight. Make sure that your giving is not what even yourself expects. Stretch yourself a little. If I have a thousand, I'll give a thousand and one. Why? Because if I can get a thousand, then I will sacrifice that which I cannot get and put it there. Give seven. Yes, give eight. Bless the name of the Lord. Give above. Since the future is uncertain, we should hold our material, we should hold our material possession. That's what we are told. Is it right or wrong? Because life is uncertain. You know, some of us keep pesa ya darura until darura never show up. Why don't you put it in the bank even? But you are holding it that there is going to be a, a rainy day. So which rainy day? Some of us wait for rainy days and we cannot, in, we cannot invest. Why? Because we struggle with the rainy day. But Solomon is saying, no, 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 no. Cast your bread upon the water. Not only that. Give to seven. No, 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 no. Give to eight. Let people not give more than what they expect. Give more. And this is what God is calling us as a church. That we are going to give more. Bless the name of the Lord. And I am so grateful that some of you cannot be predicted. 
Because what? Because God is not predictable either. Bwana asifiwe sana. Bwana asifiwe sana. Sure, conventional wisdom teaches us to save for a rainy day. But Jesus taught us in the parable of the rich fool not only to lay up treasures for ourselves but also to be rich towards God in the gospel of Luke chapter 12 and verse 21. If you always hold what God has blessed you with and don't share with others, you have totally missed the point of what being rich towards God is all about. God has given you and you still want to hold on to it. I, the other day I, I shared, if you go with a three-year-old child to a, to, a, to a restaurant, can I tell you what they will ask? Chips and sausage. Even when you know they could ask for a good chicken, boiled chicken, you know, with the soup and some salad, even if you know it. Chips and sausage, ma'am. Then in the middle of eating, if you put your hand to pick one, simbili, one. They will throw your hand away. What you need to do is to wait until they are, they are full. And normally they get full very quickly. And then they say, Mom, nifungiwe. That you can take one as you want to You can pick one. Lakini akilala kwa gari. Paya tamukia. Tamuka kisama nini? Chipsi yangu. Ilikuwa yako ama ilikuwa ya baba yako. Nani alikunulia? Nasa imekuwa yako. Na naweza hata kukunulia ingine. Now that's how we behave with God. God has, it is God is asking, what do you want? Chips and sausage. And then God wants to pick one. He said, no, 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 it's mine. Then you sleep in the middle of the night, you kick the blanket and you're asking, chips is angu. Chips is angu. Whose chips was it? Was it yours? Was it, was it the Lord? Solomon says, give a portion to seven. Yes, give it to eight. The number seven is biblical number of completion. You would be doing what we was expected of you to give a portion of your good to seven people because it is a complete number. It is the completion of, of what God is all about. But Solomon says, try something radical for God. Give to the eighth person also. Take the high risk. Go ahead. Cast your bread upon the waters. You remember what I told you? It's, you see, one of the things that will cause you to be unique is if you are going to do something that will an act that will will not be easily forgettable, but which can also, also not be ignored. Some of us grew when we used to compete in villages. Vijiji. In this country, they would say something like this. The first man to go to Makerere. That was in our country. The first what? Now, they don't say so. Because why? Makereres are everywhere. Even Kenyatta is a Makerere. Nairobi University is a Makerere. You know Makerere to the old people was a university. So they would say, Oh no, you work with Makerere. Because Makerere was a university. Now it, it doesn't. It doesn't. But they used to say, the first nurse in our village. The first doctor in our village. The first guy to go from five, from six, university. They used to say, so, and man, you'll be looked at. Yani ukipita hata mjua thika hivi tunasema yule jamaa bwana ni the first one kutoka primary yetu kwenda Mangu High School. Eh, Mangu High School. Hallelujah. Mangu High School. Yani hizo zingine sio high school lakini Mangu High School. Eh, Mangu High School. Na tumesoma mambo ya Mangu High School na Alliance na shule shule hot hot. Tumesikia vile wanafanyaga hiyo Mangu High School. Kwa hivyo hata hiyo tulisomea ni shule poa kwa sababu hatukufanya Atukuwa na siri ya tulifanya, sisi tulifanya mutihani vile huko, tukapata masi yetu bwana. Kumbe jamaa wali tucheza karata, ukiweka hapa utapotea, ukiweka hapa utapeta, tukafanywa hivi, tukirudi kuangalia, tukakuta tusha hepwa. But anyway, it doesn't matter the first person who went to high school. The first vehicle in the village. Oh, the first vehicle. Ah, watoto wanakuja na watu wata. Ah, ya, 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 gari ya guhito ya bere. Gari yetu ya kwanza. Gari yetu. That is expectation, but Solomon is saying, don't give what people expect. Surprise them. In the name of the Lord. Do an act that cannot be ignored. 
You know, when we started Cornerstone Academy, we struggled. Our struggle was Marion, Vicar Road Christian, Mount Lavena, Ruaraka Academy, Mountain View. Those were the schools, man. So we, the first exam we did, we wanted to know to Meshinda Nani. At our Zazi, the pastor, and everybody to go to Nagaria to Meshinda Nani. Nani. Meshinda Nani. Miaka ya kwanza tatu, tulipo shida Marion, tuka shida hiyo igine, tuka shida hiyo igine, igine. tuka relax, tukirudi kustuka, tulikuwa tumeshidu hata zile zilikuwa zimekuja badae, zilikuwa zimeanza kutushida. But I was told by someone, Bishop, to maintain position, that is the hardest thing to do, but to be to those that are there, unaweza fanda mbinu zote. Hata kuna mtu moja alikuja kuniona. Haka nambia Bishop, do you want, do you want a few children do you want a few children in your school to be number one? I said, kwanu watu wanafanyaga nini? Si ulete million yuone. So we know. We know. These things are there. They are not here. Data tunachanga saidi wa wanaona di wanaanza kutuambia. We know those things are there. Mtoto wako hata kama ajapata max ya kuenda mangu. Ukiwa nangiri 25, mahali pazuri. Na ujue utapatia nani na itaingia na mnagani. Hataenda tu. Na niangalia na mnagani. <laughs> Ni kwa sababu hatuwajui hao. Wanakuambia hataeda. Hatia unataka eda wapi. Nuhu there are some people who ask you. Unataka eda chule gani. Unasema. Na ambio eda uchukue barua. I don't know how they do it. But whatever happens they do it. So the thing is we know the tricks that are happening. We know that there are some schools that make sure they have few campuses. So that you have makini A, makini B, makini C. So Cornerstone can beat makini C and makini D. But Makinie is always beating us. Why? Because the bright children are taken to Makinie. Then the best kidogo kidogo Makini B. What a bongolala Makini. We know, we know, we know, we know that. Light Academy, we know those things. We know those things. But you know, the point that Solomon is trying to let us know is this. Surprise. Surprise is the word. Surprise is the word. Do it not as expected. Do a little more in the name of the Lord. And I want to thank God even for the, the team that is helping me today. Second point that uh, Solomon brings, and I'm also bringing it to you. Don't make excuses. Of course, a little earlier I said that people will make excuses. They will. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree fall upon the earth towards the south or towards the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there shall it be. Yani hiyo mti kianguka na ozea pale. He that observes the wind shall not sow, and he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. When we are talking about giving or the law of prosperity, the risk element is key. The risk element is key. Some things are inevitable. Clouds will bring rain. A tree lies right where it fell, Solomon says. Some folks won't take the risk because they fear these occurrences. They won't show their seed because they fear the wind might blow it away. They are right. The wind might blow their seed away. Some folks think that it might rain so they don't try to harvest their crops. They are right too. Sometimes when you go to get something positive done, something negative gets in your way. But you can't sit on your hands throughout your entire life just because bad things sometimes happen. You know me, I come from a place where it's called Karate Gakorino. Some of you don't know why. We had Wakorinos there. And Wakori, let me tell you, you don't know Wakorino. Wewe, unaonaga akina hese wewe. Udi Wakorino wakweli. Unaonaga hawa mefunga nguo mbaka hapa. Wakorino. Hey, wakorino tunawajua wale Wakorino wakweli. Hakuwa kiingia gari, anabeba mudhegi wa mutha, anapiga mguu kutoka kadara baka kwetu karate. Na wakienda wanaeda wakiwa wegi, wakifika pari waona wakurino wegino wanasimama, wanaimba wimbo. Wale wakubama wana kwanza wanasema, mwadhiye kuhu wagedi haya, mwena thanju na ligu, nirugendo tugu, wanajibu wale sasa. 
Twiri tuwa negai wito tuwa na oru tuwa na wega Rugogo kana ki adai Rugogo kana ki adai Twiri tuwa negai wito Those ones, those ones if you are a relative to them, they used to make a place for the relatives. Watoto wakija, watoto wa relatives wao, wamejengewa tunyasi pale, wanawekewa tusahani pale. Chakula chao kinawekwa pale. Na kinawekwa ni kama watai kuguza hiyo sahani. Wakienda kwa duka zetu za karate, walikuwa wanasima mambali hivi. Sama mwaya, tanya dalia chube, na chukari, na maguta, na motu. Akiwa mekaa mbali. Arafu anaweka pesa pale chini. Yule muzaji anakuja na chukua pesa. Anarudi nazo. Anaweka cheji pale. Jamaa naanza ceremony ya kuklenzi hizo pesa. Na naziosha na maji. Bahati nzuri ni kwamba noti ilikuwa ya mia moja. Kwa hivyo lazima urudishiwe makoini wekua mengi. Sasa nakaa pale ya naimba aki clean makoini yaki. Ungia muguza hivi. Anaingia kwa muto ya karate mara moja tubu. Iyo dhahu iyo ndoke. You can't sit down on your hands your entire life. Just because bad things happen. You have to keep going. Just because there are people that are being, are being beaten in Gedhura. It does not mean we, can't, we cannot stay there. We will. Bless the name of the Lord. Don't make excuses not to give. Don't make excuses. Don't say you can't. You can. Bless the name of the Lord. Because it is not the how much. I told you the tataravs are also received in the name of the Lord. The, the real thing is don't wait for an ideal situation. An ideal condition. So that you can take your spiritual risk. No matter what precautions you take. There are some things you have no control over. So live by faith. I'm going to live by faith. I'm going to take the risk and leave the results to God. I'm going to give to the Lord because he says, Give and shall be given unto you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to obey the Lord. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus and not to lean on my own understanding, but to lean on God and God alone. Bless the name of the Lord. Don't wait for ideal condition. I like, I love my mother. My mother, when it rains, like now she is with us here, when it rains, anasema, nekule muona kuhandu. Yani, let there be a person that can plow and plant. Now, because I've gone to school, I say, the weatherman has said, this rain is not going to, to, to and then she tells me, to stop it. When it rains, that's when we plant. Because you are not God. True. So there are some times she has harvested when I would have not planted. So even this rain that has rained, nimetumana pesa, kumerimwa, na kumepandwa. Na hakuanza kulirimwa na tinga tinga kwa sababu it was urgent. Yomvua ispote. Oh God, have mercy. I only pray that all of us can be that. That we will not, we will not be hindered by the clouds to do the planting. We will not be stopped by things around us. We will still do it to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. I'm going to travel in a car, accidents are there. I'm going to fly out, accidents are there. I'm going to sail, accidents are there. I'm going to invest, even if Clip was there and the other ones were there, because I also know there are some of you that have harvested because you have been risk takers in the name of the Lord. Number three, expect things beyond your understanding. Now, this is the best part. Solomon is trying to tell his listeners and he's telling us, as thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones grow in the womb of her, how far that is with the child, even so thou knowest not whether whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether both. But if they are both, it will be very good. So he's saying, the way of the spirit could also be translated the path of the wind. Meteorologists have learned a lot about the weather, but still, there is a lot of mystery in things like tornadoes and hurricanes. And even here, they have said it will not rain and it has rained. 
They have said the weather is this and we have prayed and God has brought. There are so many things that is only God who understands. And therefore we need faith in God. How sweet it is to trust in Jesus. Not to lean on our own understanding. Not to look at the focus on our eyes. But to have faith in God because God is going to do things for us. And I say this sincerely. God is going to answer us in many ways. I know we are giving. This is a season of giving. But I know some of us, God will give. I know some of us, God will protect. I know some of us, God will open doors. I know some of us will pass exams. I know some of us, our business will thrive. But it does not mean all of us will have it in one way. Because God has ways. The way he answers, he doesn't answer one way. So expect things beyond your understanding. May God cause me to have faith that what he's going to do will be beyond my understanding and the theory that I have. But if you really want to get mystical, just consider how the human body develops in the womb from a tiny fertilized egg. Man, man may duplicate some aspects of God's gift, but he cannot create life. One scientist told God, God, come down. We want to have some scientific work with you. So, and the scientist tells, the, tells God, make man and I'm going to make man. So God took some dirt and started working on man. And then the scientist is asking, God, uh, what, what about me? He says, go and look for your soil. Because the soil belongs to God. And out of course, the whole purpose is that the scientist has nothing. Well, what he has is the sciences. But he has nothing. But he has nothing. But he has nothing. Solomon has application in verse 6. Even so thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Get busy and do something. Or God, even if you don't know exactly how it will turn out, we have no excuse to leading a dull life. We need to have the excitement and passion for life. Bless the name of the Lord. Don't you worry that you may fail if you try. Because failure is only certain if you don't try. Don't you worry that you may fail if you try. Because failure is only certain if you don't try. So there are many failures here because you have never tried. But you have said, no, 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 but you have not tried. So you have already failed. But if you try, something is going to be certain for sure is going to happen. Don't you worry. Solomon's fourth principle is plan on dark days. Verse 7 and 8. Truly the light is sweet and pleasant thing. It is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for there shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Sure, sunshine is great. But we also know there are going to be some dark days in everyone's life. Know what makes the difference between sunny days and cloudy days? It is how you look at them. That's the difference. How you look at the cloudy days and sunny days. The days that the Lord brings to you, how you look at them, the difference is how you look at them. C.S. Lewis, whose mother died when he was nine, he later lost his wife Joy to cancer. When he was a boy, he never came to grips with his mother's death. But as a man, he was forced to come to grips with the death of his wife. And this is what he said. The boy chooses safety. The man chooses suffering. Why he could not come to terms with the death of his mother? Because at that time as a boy, all what he was concerned was safety. But men, all what we are concerned, we know we are going to suffer. We know it is not easy. I met, I met um, one man. You know him. He's a, he, his, his name is Bethwell. Bethwell used to be an ambassador and so on and so forth. We met somewhere. So I said, brother, he stopped and we greeted each other. I said, how are you? And, you know, peace and so on and so forth, reconciliation and so on and so on. Because I had gone to take tea at Serena. <laughs> no, it's in Zuri ni kuambie. Tuliambio na Irene, usi yoko pepali unakunyua chai. Ukita kuongea na watu wa dos. Enda, enda usbuko. 
So I was taking tea there so he came and greeted him. And this is what he told me. He told me, Bishop, at my age when I wake up and I have no pain, I'm supposed to call the doctor. Did you hear what I say? At my age, he's over 70. At my age, Bishop, if I wake up in the morning without pain, I call the doctor. So I ask him, what does that mean? It means because if I don't have pain, I'm either numb or a stroke is coming. So immediately I wake and there is no pain. Daktari, Daktari, Buana, Sina, Sitches Kik, Sina, So when he wakes up, he feels the pain. He says, Praise God, what a day. And then he walks, he walks, he, you know, he feels good. I, I know some of you, when you wake up and you have pain, you can't go anywhere because of your age. But when you get to his age, you'll be asking for pain to know whether you are still. And I thought that was a deep revelation. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about you. Me, when I wake up with pain, I say, Alice, sukuwa mgongo. Sukuwa hiyo. Staki ya uchungwa dan nentafuta panado. Upesi, upesi. So men, like Bethuel, suffering, looking for pain and to remind him that he is well and he is alive. But some of us, we want life without no pain. But that's a lie from the devil. This life that we live, we will have challenges. We'll wake up thinking this way and we'll have a roadblock somewhere. We'll walk this way and the door will be locked before us. There will be some challenges along the way. But you know what? Plan for those dark days. Don't live like you, have, you are planless. Plan. And that's what he's telling, uh, telling, telling, um, telling uh, Solomon. He's telling his people, please, please, when you think about the future, when you plant, plant wisely. Not just one place. Plan wisely. So, C.S. Lewis is expressing a point. He was the greatest man who ever lived and yet he endured the greatest suffering. His strength to endure can become ours if we'll take the risk to embrace our pain. Embracing our pain. Finally, keep your eyes on the big picture. Keep your eyes on the big picture. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. Rejoice, O young man. Rejoice, O oh young man. Rejoice, O oh young man. Keep your eyes on the big picture. The trappings of youth are temporary, but eternity is forever. So he's saying, you, man, enjoy it, but it is temporal. It is temporal. Young people tend to go to the extreme of not thinking about the consequences of their actions. Sometimes, you look at them and you wonder, are they thinking of the consequences? I know some of us, when they look at us, they say, Wewe msencha. you don't understand the times you are living in. Actually, it is digital. Did you know there is nothing that has been done that is new, even what you are calling digital? Because all what you have done is to improve communication, but communication is still there. Remember somebody sending money Alikuwa meambiwa pesa unatuma kwa posta. Anaenda kwa kiti ya simu wana gonga gonga. We, hii pesa ni ya mama. Lafu kuna mtu wamejivicha pale ya naona haki gonga gonga. Alipo wacha si mtu wanakuja anachukua. So before we go to know that you, that poster you have to go to, it is to go to the poster, ili money transfer it umwe. There are a few people that lost their money. So somebody might say, no, 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 we advance. We go to the post. No, no, no. What was new? The idea was there, but the, somebody improved it. M-Pesa has come now. Uh, you, when seated there, you can send your you know, money right now and so on. And you can even pay your tithe and your offering M-Pesa. That's great. Lakini kitu ambacho hakija badilika na nikuambia ukweli ni dhambi. Hakuna digital na monorogo. Ni anarogo. It is because I'm an analog. Dambi, wizi, hakuna digital, wizi ni wizi, unaanzaga hapa, unachora, unaiba. 
But you know what, young people? As you grow older, we can go to the other extreme also. We tend to play it safe. We want to lead comfortable and predictable lives. You know, you, now you are growing old. You want to be predictable and, and everything. So even that extreme is not good. And this other extreme is not good. We need to strike a balance. So these last two verses of this chapter are not just a warning to young people. They are also a wake-up call to the older adults. Don't become a dust collector. Don't become a dust collector. Cast your bread upon the waters. Don't let fear, pessimism, paranoia rule you. Stay spiritually awake. Remain spiritually active. Keep going. No cost is too great a price to pay for the cost of Christ. Even if you lose your life, trying to serve Christ. Remember what Jesus said. He that loses a life for my sake and the gospel will find it. Mark 8, 35. Find it. Find that abundant life that Jesus offers. Take the high risk of him. Take a high risk. And, and as you do so, I know that our heavenly father is going to bless you. I came to speak to you even as you give your sacrifices. That God, that there are things that you need to know. One, don't give what you expect. Go beyond. Seven, give eight. Give five. Give ten. There are people here that are very good. They give, the tithe that we ask is what they give. Don't, don't be predictable. Give more. Surprise, surprise. Because that's life. When God blesses you, he blesses you in many ways. We are also saying, please, don't give yourself excuses of not planting because of the wind. Plant. Plant. And also expect beyond your understanding. Expect God to do beyond your understanding. Let him do greater than what you think. And then plan. Have a plan. Think about the plan. And I might continue this some other time on the same passage to see what Solomon can help us. Some of the principles that are very vital for us as believers, but I want to leave it at there. Cast your bread upon the waters. Cast your bread upon the waters. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning I want to thank you for your goodness. I want to thank you that you are God and beside you there is none other. I want to thank you that we can cast our bread upon the waters. I want to thank you that we can give to seven. Yes, we can give it to eight. We can give beyond, dear Father, and we can expect beyond Dear Lord, our understanding because you are a God. I want to bless uh, men and women of this congregation. I want to pray that Heavenly Father in this season that we are talking about money, that money will come to us. We'll talk about it. We'll think about how to make it and we'll get way, wiser ways. And dear Father, you're going to give us ways to make wealth because this season is a season of us opening up, dear Father, the storehouse of our Heavenly Father and receiving the blessings that he has for us. This is the year of doing great exploit. Lord God, I pray that even financially we'll do great exploit. In our knowledge of you, we'll do great exploit. We honor you, dear Father, and we give you praise. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I realized, as I call back um, Sam, I realized that I never... In I never acknowledged the visitors. You know, that, that's one of the things I say, did I do everything? 